Inglorious Bastards is one of Quentin Tarantino's best films, and although there are so many things we could discuss, from Robert Richardson's outstanding cinematography, which is complemented by seemingly natural to the era art direction, to Tarantino's gripping writing and characters, I think an overall review can be summed up pretty well by film critic Archie Hickox. Damn good stuff, sir. Instead, I'll be focusing on Tarantino's use of language. That sounds good. But to talk about Inglorious Bastards, we should discuss previous related works in the war genre, especially those of the 60s and 70s. Now, there have been many films set during World War II since it ended, and in these we have varying uses of language, from having multiple in one film... Soldiers! You are English. Englander! So you be throwing me if you've done a pistola? to just having English alone, but with a regional accent. Attention! We are looking for four or five Alpen Corps deserters from Stuttgart. To just completely Let's ignoring go. any nationality whatsoever. It has been a privilege to serve with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why Michael Caine in The Eagle Has Landed decided to drop the German accent, but it definitely tests the audience's suspension of disbelief. And viewers are already letting reality slip a little when all sides are speaking English. At least of different accents, we have a separation and an almost imaginary language divide. But without that, it can't escape feeling like a mistake and retracts on any realism. It's an interesting thought. Now, it's not that I'm saying these films are bad because of their use of the English language or lack of authenticity of the accents used. In fact, I find some of these films fantastic. It's just that when you're in this war setting, having these opposing and divided sides, separated by language, culture, and regional accents, not using them to your advantage structurally is a missed opportunity. Let's take this scene from Where Eagles Dare, for example. In this scene, our lead characters are entering a tavern in German territory. They're there to meet up with contact working for their side. It's almost the very same situation we see in Inglorious Bastards, but with an added 30 plus Germans. As they enter, leader of the group, Major Smith, is concerned only with SS officers, strangely. Seemingly, they are the only threat in the room that could expose them. They all take seats, and as Smith sees his contact, instead of waiting for her to make the rounds and come over to him, he actually sits down with Nazi officers. I find because everyone speaks English, his ability to get out of the situation on top is just too easy, and overall less satisfying. Major, your conduct does not become an officer of the Wehrmacht. Herr Major, when you talk to me, Major Bernard Himmler, I advise you to mind your own business in future. Smith and Schaefer then chat about at the bar as if no one is in the room but them. Like it's not possible for one German to hear them and expose them all. It could have made for a far more tense scene to have our characters have to speak German to blend in, or to add you could have Schaefer not speak German at all, or simply just with a terrible German accent. So the group have to watch what they say. Without going deeper into the compromising position our characters are put in, and the idea of what could happen in this situation, it doesn't create the tension that could have made it great. Which I think is why the bar scene in Inglorious Bastards works so much better, and why Tarantino commits so much time to it. Straight away our characters know they have a problem. They hadn't planned on Nazis being in the bar, and although they all speak German, they know that just knowing the language probably won't cut it, which is exactly what happens in this segment of the film. Hickox's accent would be thoroughly questioned by our Inquisitor SS officer, who we actually also get in Where Eagles Dare. Everybody remain as he is. Until I find out what exactly is going on here. We feel the tension build as the scene goes on, and Hickox has to use his own knowledge of film to create a fictional life for himself. One that's plausible, but only believable because he knows it and tells the story so well. But all the while, we know, along with Hickox, that the longer you're talking to the enemy, the more chance you have of slipping up. Haben Sie den Riefenstahl film gesehen? Yeah. Dann haben Sie mich gesehen. Whereas, in Where Eagles Dare, a simple lie, without question, is good enough to fool the German officer in the bar scene only last a few minutes, this one is stretched out so long because of a situation that almost demands we focus on him. Our characters and in Inglorious Bastards are curious to the officer, which is why he questions constantly the legitimacy of Hickox's identity. Was tun Sie hier? Außer mit diesem reizenden Fräulein ein Getränk zu nehmen? Nun, dieses Vergnügens bedarf es keiner weiteren Erklärung. Nein, ich meine hier in diesem Land. This scene feels so natural to me. We can feel Hickox's frustration as he tries to get the German away from the table, which is almost impossible. In der Svet ist. Sie 
Bastia. After he has gained the trust of this officer, his masquerade is seen through when he gives the wrong hand gesture to order drinks. Something so simple of a cultural habit he could have not possibly prepared for or might not even known about. The bar segment is a brilliant use of the trope of allied forces having to go undercover just as the enemy and because we have native languages used in it, it makes it a highlight of the film. It's not until the bastards attend the film premiere that Tarantino almost fully embraces those older war films like The Dirty Dozen. Aldo's character is such a perfect representation of this, as he does about as well as Clint Eastwood or Lee Marvin would do in the situation. He's so unable for surrendering any aspect of himself. His voice, his character, his country, his machismo. Any accent is not an option, just a strong Americanized butchering of another language. And even though it's stronger than Tarantino originally envisioned, in my mind, he pulled it off a little bit more. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, see, si, uh, correct though. Where the film had previously given us the dramatic tension of a realistic attempt to pass as a German, it's now giving us a more humorous attempt made by those that have little to no knowledge of another language, which is the one thing that's key to survival in this situation. I don't speak Italian. Like I said, third best. Just keep your fucking mouth shut. In Inglorious Bastards, Tarantino uses language to bring us into a false sense of security. To heighten tension. To reveal true intentions. Since I haven't heard any disturbance, I assume while they are listening, they don't speak English. To misdirect. I'm going to switch back to French now, and I want you to follow my mascarada sound clear. To leave characters in the dark. <laughs> and to create humor. Buongiorno. Tarantino was showing us how intricate the use of languages can be used in film, but on top of that, for a World War II era setting, how key the languages you spoke were, and how you spoke them, as your ability to do so could save your life. <laughs> Many scenes in this film revolve around language in some way, and it's for Tarantino's structuring of a story to revolve around language that I find this film to be one of his best. If you haven't seen it, or it's just been a while, go check it out. <laughs>